My name is Omar Abdel Wahab. I'm a physician scientist that works at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. I study the genetic causes of leukemia. We really desperately need better and newer therapies for cancer. A big part of the field of oncology is discovering what drives cancer and can we improve our therapies. And the area that I was really interested in terms of clinical interest was the blood cancers. We have the so-called central dogma of biology, this idea that you go from DNA, and that gives the genetic code that controls everything in your body and every cell, goes from DNA to RNA to protein. And there's a really critical step when you go from RNA to protein, which is called splicing. The RNA has to be processed a certain way in order to make protein to make a cell normal. And it's been suspected for a long time that that process can go awry and cause cancer. But it hasn't really been that well studied, mostly because a lot of the techniques and tools to study that on a real detailed level hasn't been available except for in the last five to 10 years. The grant is focused on how does splicing become abnormal to cause cancer. Their DNA, the vast majority of it, doesn't encode for a protein. The protein are the actual tools that create a cell and that do things in cells. So in order to go from DNA to RNA, you have to remove those non-coding pieces of DNA and put together or splice together the coding pieces of DNA. And if you change that process, you can change the DNA sequence that actually becomes into protein and what areas of DNA that are removed or included that actually go into protein, that actually can change what happens in the cell. And that's the process of RNA splicing. And that's really what I'm trying to understand is how does that become abnormal in cancer? How this all developed was this discovery that there are a high frequency of mutations or genetic changes in the proteins that control RNA splicing. And those are mostly present in patients with types of leukemias. But they're also found in a proportion of patients with breast cancer, lung cancer, melanoma skin cancer, and melanoma that can affect the eyes. And so we're really interested also in trying to understand and treat those types of cancers as our initial focus. Another goal is to try to hone in on those specific genes that can be made into an oncogene, a pro-cancer gene, or a tumor suppressor gene, a gene that blocks cancer. And can we switch that balance to make more of the anti-cancer product versus the pro-cancer gene product? My hopes are really twofold. First is to understand more of the biology of cancer, the basic mechanisms by which the cancer develops. And secondly, as a very practical goal, we want to develop new therapies. When I go to the clinic and I see that we have very few treatment options for a large proportion of the adults with these kind of conditions, that to me is very motivating. So I'm always really excited to investigate new ways to look at the problem of these types of cancers, what's causing them, and can we really think about really brand new ways to target them.